Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to use DMA data in an effective way for material model calibration. I'll specifically focus on DMA data that consists of storage and loss modules as a function of temperature. And here's a figure that I found in the, in the book called Dynamic Mechanical Analysis for Plastics Engineering. And it has all this DMA data information for many different materials. And this has, happens to be polycarbonate Lexan 500. So I'm going to show you how you can calibrate a material model to this data using the DMA results. So I start by opening M calibration. And in M calibration, we can very quickly discretize that type of image. I just go to the extract data from image tool. I load the image into M calibration. And I can follow the tutorial that's mentioned here at the bottom to extract the data from the curves. And when you do that, you end up with two files that both have the following information. One would be one temperature versus storage modulus. And the second file would be uh, temperature versus loss modulus. So because the data was shown in that format in the graph, you get two files like that. So what we do after that is in M calibration, we can go to clean data. I'm going to read in the first of these files here. I'll pick the temperature storage modulus. And uh, in the version of M calibration I'm using, I can now merge these two files together, which is kind of annoying because when you do uh, generate these files, they don't necessarily have the same temperature points, but the merge feature of M calibration will merge them properly and interpolate the data as needed. So now I have three columns here, temperature, storage modulus, and loss modulus. And I can create a load case from that. But in this case, there was temperature and no frequency. So we need to inform, of course, the calibration software what the frequency was. I'm going to pick one hertz here, uh, one radian per second. So you should pick whatever was actually used in this experiment. So here's the information, storage modulus versus temperature, loss modulus as a function of temperature. We have it available here. I'm going to rename this load case to just DMA. I'm going to call it all data. Um, so this is the, all the data. For my demonstration, I don't want to use all the really low temperature information and then this drop. It's a little harder to work with that. So I'm going to truncate the data around 100 degrees C. But as I mention here, when you work with these things, you should make sure M calibration has the proper units. So you can go to settings and I have the centigrade as my temperature unit here. So I'll use these units in this demonstration. So to create a shorter file, I select it here. I go to edit experimental data and I will not save the previous data from here. It will reload the data. And if, when you see here now, it adds the additional columns of information based on sort of default values. And that's all good. We don't really have other information in this case. So I'm going to keep them the way they are. I'm going to plot here in the figure though, temperature on the X axis storage modulus on the y-axis, and I want to truncate this point and everything before that. So I just control shift uh, up and then pre press the delete button. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to create a new load case from this data. And it asks me what a unit of frequency. This is radians per second. And it's going to save this one. So here is our new uh, test. I'm going to call it, call it DMA. I'm going to deactivate the first one, so we have two files of this nature. I'm going to save this here, a simulation. And so here's the file, the experimental data that I want to work with. Um, what, well, what I want to do next is to select the material model. I'm going to edit, and I'm going to pick an example, abacus, linear elastic, viscoelastic. I'm going to assume that the hyperelastic or the elastic component does not depend on temperature. And I'm going to use a Prony series spectrum. And I'm going to use the WLF equation to make something that matches this kind of information. And here is the main material model. I'm going to fix some of these numbers here. I'm going to make T0150 because that's approximately the middle of this here. I'm going to search for C1, C2. Um, we have a very substantial drop in the storage modulus. So I'm going to make some g and some k be equal. So the 
I will make my pronus series relax both with shear modulus and loss modulus and by doing that I will get a Poisson's ratio that does not change very much. Um, I'm going to keep the rest of these parameters. E is the initial modulus over here. I can make it a little higher maybe. The software can search for that as well. Uh, I'm not going to search for the B parameter here. I'm going to just keep it at 1. And I save this and I run it by tapping Ctrl C. And here's the fit at this point. So see, it looks relatively reasonable. Uh, we, we should optimize these parameters a little bit more, obviously. Before I do that, though, in this case, um, it's, uh, what I will do is I will only optimize the storage modulus. I will say that that's what I'm mostly interested in. And uh, I'm going to set the fitness weight for storage modulus to be 1. And that's my starting point. And I'm going to just run this calibration. Run calibration. Um, I'm just going to use the extensive automatic method with the default setting. I say OK. And here's the fit. The fit ends up with a relative error of about 8-9%. So it looks relatively good. But it has a problem with the, the, this lower temperature response here. And that's pretty common when you have this type of data. So what I'm going to show, and the hint I want to show you in this video, is what you can do when you see this type of behavior, that it doesn't match the data as well as you like. And this is because we're using a spectrum representation. A spectrum representation for linear viscoelasticity is easy to calibrate, but it's very symmetrical around the sort of the TG in this material. So I'm going to switch over to Prony series, uh, the full Prony series from this data, and I'm going to use that as the second step of my calibration. So I'm going to go to Material Model. I'm going to export this Material Model to a IMP file. So I'm going to save it as simulation.imp. And then I'm going to go back to M calibration, and I will import this material model we created, simulation.imp, and here it is, the, the units look good, and what we've done now is that we have basically, in a little bit of a roundabout way, converted the spectrum into a full Prony series representation. There are 10 uh, Prony series terms here, because that's what we specified in the spectrum. We are going to keep T0 to be 150, I'm going to allow the software to search for C1, C2. Now, again, we have a little bit of a situation where the storage modulus changes so much with temperature that I, again, even in the Prony series version of this material model, I will set the G values equal to the K values. So I'm going to make this 33, and I'm going to manually have to activate the K. I'm going to tie the, these together by setting the same variable number here for G's and the K's for, in the Prony series. So I'm just going to go through and, and make these the same so we have a good mod for all the different temperatures, at least more robust than what would happen if we didn't tie these together. And that's that one. And uh, I'm going to just run this once. We'll see that it looks about the same now with this, uh, this Prony series uh, representation. Um, what I want to do is I actually like to allow the software to modify some of these time points too in the Prony series. So these are the, the values that came out of the spectrum representation, but I'm going to let the software search for some of the highest and the lowest as well. So I'm going to turn on maybe these two, and uh, that might be good enough. Um, so I'm going to start the uh, calibration at this point. I'm going to initially I'm going to just do the default setting here as well. I'll see the error goes down. It's down to three percent, and uh, that's a substantially improvement. A substantial improvement over we had with the with the spectrum representation. And we can improve this more by letting the calibration run a little longer, and. Um, that's a little bit outside the point here of my demonstration, but we could we could force it to actually match this even better. But maybe we'll try that quickly here. I'll turn on one or more of these to allow it to modify these, and then I'm going to do another uh, calibration procedure. In a case like this, sometimes I do a global optimization search because this runs so quickly. I'm going to do four iterations with eight percent perturbation 
to these parameters and perhaps that will improve this a little bit more see that it's starting to go a little crazy but it, it tries a lot of things and we'll see if it finds something that is a little better it looks a little better but not all that different in fact it is better the, the error is down to two percent but um, it's still a little bit more one could do with this calibration so that was kind of my, my purpose here of the video to show you how you can switch from a spectrum representation of the prony series back to the to the full prony series terms in all the terms and sometimes that's useful to allow a second phase calibration of the dma data in order to get slightly better results in this case we matched the, the search models pretty well we still have problems with the loss modulus and that's that's a story for another day if you have any questions about this let me know below